Madam Clerk, would you take the roll, please? City Attorney Doctor. Here. City Manager Burton. Here. Commissioner Dean. Here. Commissioner Fever. Here. Commissioner Reed. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. Would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public commentary. Please read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Minutes, the minutes for April 25th, 2020 were received. Do we have any comments, corrections? And the minutes will be accepted. Proclamation, 2022 Don't Fry Day. City of Helena Proclamation. Whereas more than 5 million Americans are diagnosed with skin cancer each year, making it the most common cancer diagnosed in the United States. And whereas one American dies every hour for skin cancer. And whereas the Surgeon General has issued a call to action to prevent skin cancer. And whereas the National Council on Skin Cancer Prevention has designated the Friday before Memorial Day as Don't Fry Day to encourage sun safety awareness and to remind everyone to pre protect the skin while enjoying the outdoors. And whereas the most common type of skin cancer, including melanoma, the deadliest form of skin cancer are strongly associated with exposure to UV radiation, sunlight, and indoor sources. And whereas individuals can take steps to reduce the risk of developing skin cancer by being sun aware, sun protection helps prevent the harmful effects of UV exposure, including sunburn, skin cancer, premature skin aging, and eye damage. Now, therefore, I, Wilma J. Collins, Mayor of the City of Helena, Montana, do hereby proclaim the 27th day of May 2022 as City of Helena Don't Fry Day. In the City of Helena, Montana, I urge all citizens to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observing. In witness hereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Helena, Montana to be fixed this 23rd day of May, 2022. Wilmot Collins, Mayor Danae Claiborne, Clerk of the Commission. May, uh, do we have Ms. Janelle Zitska in the uh, audience? Please come forward, ma'am. Well, I would like to thank you, Mayor Collins. Uh, this is very important for us. Um, on behalf of Associated Dermatology 
and the Dermatology Nurses Association, we absolutely accept this proclamation and fully support it. Um, we really anticipate this proclamation to be very impactful on the public of Helena and hopefully across Montana, especially on this day and weekend that has historically been ripe for sunburns. Um, the importance of skin cancer prevention is exemplified with this proclamation. There are a lot of things that the public don't know and bring awareness to the dangers of sunburn. While some might think incidental on, on their Memorial Day adventures can turn into skin cancers with only a few sunburns in one's life. I've been a dermatology nurse for going on 12 years in June. I have been a surgical nurse. I've seen many things excised, both uh, melanoma and non-melanoma. And I've seen the impact of people's lives with this. So I appreciate this and, and all of you. Thank you. Thank you. you bet. <clears throat> Consent agenda. A, claims. Approve granting grant funding for State of Montana for a radio phone recording system for the 911 dispatch center. C, capital budget care over 2021 to 2022. D, approve release of two existing 20 feet wide sanitary, sanitary sewer easement. Uh, okay. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I'm here to, um, for item A, claims, um, uh, recommending the commission move to approve claims paid from uh, March 31st, 2022 through April 24th. 9th, 2022, checks numbered 187249 through 188057 for a grand total of $3,062,268.49. Okay, any discussion from the commission? Do you have any public comments on this topic? I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, I move to approve claims paid from March 31st, 2022 through April 29th, 2022. Checks numbered 187249 to 188057 for a grand total of $3,062,000. $62,268.49. I am looking for a second here. Second. Mr. Mayor, would you like us to approve all items in the consent agenda or just claims? All. All. <clears throat> Commissioner Logan, do you want to add B, C, and D to that? And I'd be pleased to second it. Yes, and I'd also add um, consent agenda items B, C, and D to that as well. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion from the commission? I guess, Mr. Mayor, really briefly, do we want to hear um, the brief uh, summary from the other directors, or do we not need to worry about that? I don't have a problem with that, but if you... I'm, I'm good either way, I just... Okay. Any final discussion from the commission? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Bid award. Move to award the WWTP generator and automatic transfer switch purchase number 22-06 to the lowest responsive bidder, RDO Equipment Company, in the amount of $163,656. Director Leland. Thank you, Mayor Commission. Uh, this is a bid award for a generator and uh, automated automatic transfer switch for the wastewater treatment plant. This will be the second generator that we have out there. Currently, the existing generator can only operate half the plant. It's the essential part of the treatment so that we can still get the nutrient removal and 
uh, everything is associated with the uh, blowers um, and the biological treatment of the of the treatment uh, process, but this one will come in and we'll be able to operate the full plant, which is much better, much more efficient, and be able to keep it up and running in the event of power outage. Um, this does happen occasionally. Um, not, it's very uncommon, but it is good to have this backup and it is actually required by DEQ either have backup pumps or backup generators to be able to operate um, in the event of a power outage. On May 3rd, we did open uh, two bids, one from RDO Equipment, which was the lowest responsible bidder, for $163,656 uh, for the Cumming, Cummings motor. motor. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be, able to, I'd be happy to answer them at this time. Comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I do have one question. Please. Um, thanks, Mr. Leland. Uh, I, I'm wondering, so, you talked about this would allow, and it, in the memo it talks about allowing full capacity for extended periods of power outage. What do we consider extended? And I'm thinking specifically of, we haven't necessarily experienced this in Montana or in Helena, but a number of other states in the last couple of years have had, you know, one week, two weeks of power outages um, impacting municipalities. So would this be able to, you know, support us if, if we were to face something like that? Mayor, Commissioner, yes, that is the idea is to be able to go, not indefinitely, but for extended weeks um, to be able to whatever supply of the diesel that we're going to put in there or the propane, um, until that gets cut off, we will be able to supply power to the system. Great, thanks. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I will move to award the WWTP generator and automatic transfer switch purchase number 22-06 to the lowest responsive bidder, RDO Equipment Company, in the amount of $163,556. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Do we have any comments, final questions from the uh, commission? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Communications proposals from the commissioners. Do we have anything, commissioners? We'll move along. Report of the city attorney. City attorney, doctor. I have nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Report of the interim city manager, Tim Burton. Yes, Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to invite uh, the public works director, Ryan Leland, up to report on the event that happened at 10 Mile uh, Water Treatment Plant last weekend and their response. Um, uh, these gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, did a wonderful job keeping the city in, in service last weekend. So with that, Mayor, I'd turn it over to Mr. Leland. You have the floor, Mr. Leland, Director Leland. Thank you, Mayor, Commission, uh, City Manager. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to recognize staff. It is a real privilege to be able to have the staff that we do for the City of Helena, the dedication and competence that they have to be able to respond to a break like this is very reassuring. Uh, it was a 2.30 2 in the morning uh, last weekend that we had a catastrophic failure of the transmission main that came into town. Uh, this had the potential to be able to uh, put the whole city out of water and could compromise the fire protection. If it wasn't for the dedication of staff and also the forethought of previous administration and commissioners to have a, another water treatment plant and then also to have a contract with BOR to purchase up to uh, 3.6 billion gallons of water from Canyon Ferry, which we only use 5.5 million gallons currently, um, it would have been a much different story. We wouldn't be here talking with this best possible outcome that we were able to get the other treatment plant up and running within hours of the failure and no one from the general public or very few people from the general public even knew. Noted. And so 
that is the best thing we can do. We're under the radar. No one says anything. And it was just a very big catastrophic failure, which we we're looking into. Um, but our staff all through public works and throughout the city is able to respond uh, in any weather conditions, uh, any time of day. They come in uh, and find a solution to get us back up and running. And then the resiliency of our overall water system puts us in a great spot. And it's a very safe um, system that is out there. So it helps me uh, sleep better at night, uh, knowing how dedicated that we have of the staff that we have out there. And with that said, I would like to, with your permission, to have the superintendents, Ben Rigby and Trent Troyer, come up and talk of specifics about the breaks and the repair that was able to happen at that time. And then after that, we'd, have, we'd be available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director Leland, the superintendent. And uh... You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, ben Rigby, Water Treatment Superintendent. Um, just thank you for taking this time to acknowledge our dedication. And uh, it wasn't really me, it was the guys and the girls. Um, two o'clock in the morning, phone rings. I know it's usually not good when an operator calls me at two o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> from the time two o'clock to uh, pipeline was shut down at three o'clock. Um, had the uh, Missouri River Treatment Plant up by six o'clock. So there was uh, um, no, no shortage of water in the city. And uh, I just thank you for acknowledging this. And uh, Trent, you would like to say anything? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Trent Shorter, Utility Maintenance Superintendent. Um, I just want to take the opportunity to thank our guys and our staff. Um, yeah. uh, Shane Bogard's our sewer supervisor back there. And Jamie Newlands, our water supervisor. Um, them, along with Alex Waddell, our meter supervisor, just their guys that respond to this stuff um, without fail. Uh, multiple times throughout the winter. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but for some reason cold weather is when things like to break. Uh, these guys are out there uh, this past winter and exemplary the winter before. They are literally out there on the coldest night of the year two years ago. Uh, they had three separate main breaks in town that night. Um, got all taken care of, as Ryan mentioned, you know, very few people are ever aware that it even happens. Um, it's fantastic. I just want to take the opportunity with your permission to throw a couple names out there, give them some recognition. You bet. Uh, so Bill Cross, Nathan Tabbert, Brad McEvers, Pat Devine, Hunter Halson, Trevin Hoffman, Bill Nance, Aaron Mills, Connor Cavanaugh, James Danko, Kevin Wood, Bronson Brown. Uh, these gentlemen are the ones that are out there, uh, show up every time we ever need them to do a fantastic job for us so thank you thank you thank you and uh, before you leave uh, this is the one time I'm going to prevail upon the IR to please publish this and let the public know that these guys did what they're being paid to do and nobody noticed how major that break was and so for that I'm sure on behalf of the Commission we want to thank you all for what you've done and um, please get those names for those guys and put it in the R. Let them know we appreciate their service. Thank you so much. Anything else from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I would echo your comments. And I think, I mean, our water service is one of those that is literally the most essential of essential. And I think um, one of those places that the public doesn't necessarily always think about, but it's something you use every day. and. Um, had, had your teams not been thinking and moving and acting as quickly as they did, I think it's something the public would notice um, and truly exemplifies public service and we're very, very grateful for all the work and um, I agree, Mr. Mayor, really hope the IR um, and KTVH can provide a story and really show you know who are some of the unsung heroes frequently um, that really make our, our city function and daily lives happen um, without having to think about it. So very, very grateful. Any others? Mr. Mayor, if I might for a oh. moment. Yes, go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. I, I just also wanted to say thank you. Um, I have appreciated the hard work of, of this team um, now through a pandemic uh, and, and this most recent uh, situation. So thank you so much for all of your work. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, 
very, very remarkable. Uh, thank you very much for um, what you do day in and day out and, and quite often goes unrecognized. And, and I think this is a remarkable example of uh, knowledge, professionalism, and responsiveness. Uh, so thanks a lot. I do have a couple questions. Please go ahead. <clears throat> what, what tipped you off? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. At the uh, 10 mile treatment plant, um, we have a low clear well alarm. So it's, uh, we can hold uh, 6 million gallons of water, finished water in the outside clear well. And the only way uh, the first tip off is a low clear well alarm. And we've, at the treatment plant, uh, me being a paranoid human that I am, we, we play <laughs> scenarios out. So we've actually played this scenario before. So um, get the phone call, the operator gets the phone call on call, low clear well alarm goes out to the plant, see that the clear well is dropping, he immediately knows to go shut the outside clear well valve to shop, stop the hemorrhaging. And then we go assess the situation. And then, then I call Trent and we go try and find the water and then which leads to my second question. Yes. Where was it? Um, right in front of the RV ranch. I see. Yep. And uh, so then we have the, the second plant. So it's a blessing and a curse to have two plants. You know, more things, more mechanical things, more chemical deliveries, more costs and like things like that. But uh, um, I have to give it to, to my crew also. Uh, we, had, we had water back into town at, in four hours. So um, yes. we just, uh, yeah, so thank you. Thank Something you. Else. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You bet. Any others? Yes, Mr. Mayor and, and our good staff, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you on be, my behalf, behalf of my family, this community. Great job. Much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Manager and Director Leland. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Communications from Helena Citizens Council, Representative Nolan Harris. Madam Clerk, do we have Mr. Harris? Mr. Mayor, I, I don't see Nolan uh, as part of the participants online. Unless there's another member of the HCC online, they can raise their hand. I don't see anyone, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Regular items, A, consider a curb cut variance request at 1550 Vandalay Avenue. Director Kanopke. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. As Good you evening. stated, this is a, a curb cut variance. Sorry for cutting you off. <laughs> curb cut variance for 1550 Vandalay Avenue. Uh, city code 757E states that properties less than 60 with frontage less than 60 feet um, are entitled one and curb cuts that uh, are between 60 and 600 get two this property does not exceed the 600 feet um, limit so the applicant is requesting a variance to this section of code so that they can install three curb cuts within their um, property the first one is into a uh, singular parking lot that has one exit uh, and then the second one uh, if they were to build to the code would again have only one entrance and exit but the second uh, entrance for this lot would provide better turnaround coverage for emergency services and that is the primary reason for the second uh, um, curb cut on that lot so that the emergency services and both the and the employees can get through that lot a little bit better uh, the only disadvantage is that it does introduce another curb cut so there would be a additional uh, traffic coming on at different locations vandalay is a fairly short street and it doesn't appear that this will be too much of a, an issue uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions, and then the, I believe the uh, applicant's engineer is online to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Director Kanapke. Do we have comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, one question um, for Director Kanapke. So based on the presentation you've just given, it's, you know, your opinion that 
this would m make um, uh, approving this variance would improve the safety of this property? Uh, approval of this variance would uh, increase the emergency access, so yes, um, for those. Otherwise, the, the trucks have to be backed out into an, a street, which is not the safest maneuver, so this would be um, for emergency service access and also the employees to have an alternate exit and entrance. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, if I might. Yes, please, Commissioner. Uh, thank you. Director Knopke, just a question on um, the interactions with pedestrians. Is there some marking or um, raised surface on the sidewalks or anything to indicate to pedestrians that it is a, a um, curb cut that vehicles might be coming over? Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, not per se, but the your typical driveway entrance crossing a boulevard area would, and then there are internal curbing that you know comes out to the sidewalk. So it should be fairly apparent to pedestrians that it is just a, a driveway curb cut. And um, I hope that answers your question. It does. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other comments or questions from the commission? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Please come forward. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, and wanted to, oh, excuse me, my name is Jeremy Morris, M O R R I S, uh, from Staley Engineering, uh, 3530 Centennial Drive. I want to thank Mr. Knopke for his uh, presentation as well. And I just wanted to reiterate uh, the reasoning for this uh, variance request is primarily for allowing full maneuverability for emergency vehicles uh, to get in and out as required by the fire marshal. Um, additional approach would also provide uh, optimal additional needs for avoidance of uh, dead end parking and it allows easier ingress and egress for uh, the people utilizing that parking lot. Um, additionally, this satisfies the uh, growth policy objectives to optimize the use of the uh, valuable land in, which is identified in the neighborhood center. Um, we are requesting the approval of this variance request allowing for the immediate uh, building permitting and construction of the site. Um, I'm available to answer questions and also in attendance we do have uh, from Opportunity Bank Daryl Rensman. Excuse me. Thank you. Will he be providing any new information? I do not believe okay. so. Do we have any other public comments? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I will move to approve the installation of three curb cuts at 1550 Vandalay Avenue. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion from the commission? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving along. Consider a resolution authorizing the consumption of alcoholic beverages and the possession of open containers of intoxicating beverages on city-owned property within the downtown urban renewal district for Big Sky Pride events that are scheduled to occur July 23rd, 2022. Attorney Doctor or Director Kanopke or Interim Police Chief Petty. I don't know who's going to take the floor. Mayor, members of the commission, Becky Doctor, City Attorney, now going on three weeks. It's a privilege to present to you today. The first item that I get to present to you. <clears throat> this is the item requesting you to approve or deny a resolution authorizing consumption of alcoholic beverages and possession of open containers within the Helena Downtown Urban Renewal District on July 23rd, 2022. This would be for the Big Sky Pride events 
in the downtown urban renewal district on the one day, July 23rd, and it is requesting the suspension of two code provisions, 5-1-1 and 7-14-1, one of which is prohibiting the possession of alcoholic beverages and the other one is prohibiting the consumption of alcoholic beverages. In effect, your action would allow for open containers on that one day in that one area. <clears throat> this would not affect any other code provisions, just the two I've mentioned. And Big Sky Pride organizers have worked with the city to address some issues that arose last, last year with the same event, and the city is satisfied that those are addressed. Uh, David Konopke, director, transportation director, and chief of police, Betty, Brett Petty, are both here to answer any questions you might have that I couldn't answer. Other than that, I have nothing else unless you have questions for me. Thank you. Thanks, Attorney Doctor. Do we have any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I, do, I have a couple questions. Um, so we approved the same, a similar resolution, um, essentially doing the same thing last year. Um, we haven't necessarily gotten any other requests from other events for something like this, but we do know that there are going to be, you know, our we are achieving the goals of the downtown master plan and it is becoming a place where lots of people want to be and lots of events um, want to be held there, which is awesome. Um, and I think that Big Sky Pride has always had, you know, safe and um, really fun um, events that they put on during, during Pride Weekend. Um, I'm wondering, and this is more conceptual moving forward, We'd like to be in a place where we don't have to approve this kind of resolution every year. Um, so what does this look like? Um, and I'm, I'm going to guess this might be directed towards the city manager, but f feel free, city attorney, if you want to jump in. What does this look like moving forward so that we're in a place that we have consistency across events um, when others want to start organizing similar ones? Mayor, Commissioner Dean, thank you. We actually had a meeting on this very issue just today, city manager and a number of others, including some bus downtown business owners, and we discussed moving forward how we would address that very thing. I think conceptually, you asked conceptually, how would this look moving forward? We don't quite know yet exactly what it would look like, but we have put our best people on it to try and come up with something that we could then bring before the commission and address um, a need to be across at least the downtown and perhaps even the city of Helena okay. in its entirety. Okay, great. And then my second question, um, the, the organizers are of Big Sky Pride, um, they're still getting the insurance um, that, that we have under our permit, is that correct? Mayor, Commissioner Dean, I would defer to uh, Chief Petty or David Knop David Knopke on that. Good evening again, Mayor and Commissioners. Good evening. Um, yes, they are proceeding to get the insurance as requested, just like last year, um, to cover that event, <clears throat> um, that evening of that event. Okay, great. Um, and just one comment, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that we've been able to, city staff has been able to work with Big Sky Pride to resolve some of the um, <coughs> concerns after last year's um, event. I think that this is one of those events that continues to get better and better each year. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that the city's done to help move us there, including um, if approved during this budget, a, a second year of um, supporting sponsorship um, of Big Sky Pride. Um, and so glad to see that move forward. I really am looking forward to this conversation of what it looks like at a broader level, not just for this one event, um, but for more events um, as can downtown continues to become a, a going concern. Um, it's really a thriving place and I'm excited to see that continue, but very anxious for those future discussions. Thank you. Any other comments? I see Commissioner Dean. I mean, Commissioner Reed. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just would like to echo uh, what Commissioner Dean said. I, I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about these conversations. I'm glad that we are able to move this forward for this one event, uh, but I do think conversations about how to address this, not on an annual ad hoc basis, will be great. So I appreciate the work being done and I will look forward to updates on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the, yes, Commissioner? Yeah, Logan. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, maybe a couple questions and a comment. Um, so the ordinance 7-14-1 uh, relative to this says that the consumption of alcoholic beverages upon city's right of way, including public ways, streets, alleys, parks, and other places owned by the city is prohibit prohibited except by a permit issued by the Helena city manager or designee. And then subsequent sections talk about uh, the permit conditions and then the insurance and indemnification requirements. Is the applicant obtained a permit and met those insurance and indemnification requirements? And if they have, is this resolution necessary? That's, those are my questions. Mayor, members of the commission, Commissioner Logan, the uh, the process that we've used here is the one that was used in the past as well. And so suspending only 714-1 and 5-1-1 requ doesn't require a permit, but we do, and I would defer this to um, Transportation Kanopke, or Director and, and Chief Petty, um, to answer the question, I do believe we have a process to also issue a permit, and so we've got both ends covered. Your question about whether or not it would be required, um, it is perhaps, my, it's my opinion that we probably would not have to make this action here today if the city manager would issue the permit, but we have done it this way in the past, and um, it does allow for uh, suspension of the requirement for a permit. However, I believe they've met the permit conditions and that's the piece that I guess I'm looking to the director and chief for. Does that answer your question? Because uh, yes, and, and I, but I do have a comment. Okay, please uh, go ahead. When, uh, go, go ahead, Mr. Director. Uh, Mayor, Commission, the primary reason for the suspension of the, of the city code is that <coughs> That particular piece of code um, is typically used for one establishment and you know the immediately adjacent property to that establishment. This is from 6th Street all the way down the entire walking mall. So it not only encompasses multiple um, businesses, but a larger area than our typical permits allow for. So that is the primary reason I believe that the city attorney in the past has went this route instead of just issuing a single permit. Okay, thank you. And, and so my comment, um, I guess I, I'm not gonna be supporting this resolution this evening for, well, I kind of dusted off my rationale from last year because I opposed it at that time. Um, the, the resolution seeks to suspend portions of the Helena City Code um, specifically section 7-14-1, which prohibits the consumption of alcoholic beverages on the city's rights of way, um, unless the permit has been issued by the city manager. It also seeks to suspend section 5-1-1, which prohibits the possession of open containers of intoxicating beverages on the streets, alleys, parks, or any other public premises in the city unless the permit is granted pursuant to section 7-14-1. So as last year, I am this year still uncomfortable with the idea of the suspension of code. If we want to repeal, amend, or otherwise change ordinance, there is process to do that. Our bylaws state, these bylaws were adopted in June of 1977, amended in March of 2015, that the purpose of those bylaws are to govern the internal operation and procedures of the Commission and provide for the conduct of official meetings of the Commission. In Article 2, Section 1 of those bylaws in the general rules, it states, the Commission to act by ordinance. In addition, 
to those actions required by law to be done by ordinance, the following acts of the commission shall be done by ordinance, lists off about five conditions, and then concludes with that the commission will act by ordinance if it wants to amend or repeal any ordinance previously adopted. All other official actions of the commission may be taken by resolution or motion. And further in our commission handbook, also amended in 2015, a multi-step process is described for the passage of an ordinance. An ordinance receives a first reading, followed by a second, and final reading no less than 12 days later, and in general, is not effective until 30 days after final passage. I believe this process is there to adopt an ordinance that it is there to ensure that we as a commission are deliberative and thoughtful when those ordinances are adopted or when they are changed. That process is also there to ensure that the public is fully aware and fully able to participate in action that is taken by their local government to change the laws that affect them as is their right specifically granted by the Montana Constitution. So in my opinion, the resolution disregards all of the aforementioned and so I won't be supporting it. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the commission? Um, Mr. Mayor and ahead, fellow commissioners, I support the Big Sky Parade. I think it's a very strong and positive attraction uh, for our state, not just our city, uh, that it's well attended, the participants are, are in order, and um, it was a great event of last year. Uh, I, though reflecting on the comments of the last two commissioners or three who have spoken, obviously this should be a part of the discussion going forward. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to the day when the city manager just is able to do it and the commission doesn't have to then argue the law or the code or anything else. And um, I'm ready to move forward on a motion here. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other comments from the commission? Do we have any public comments? Thank you, Director and Chief. Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no raised hands or no, and no written public comment online. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move the commission authorized consumption of alcoholic beverages and possession of open containers of intoxicating beverages on city owned property within the downtown urban renewal district for Big Sky Parade Pride events that are scheduled to occur on July 23, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion from the commission? Again, I think this is a quality event for our city. I'm delighted that um, uh, Big Sky Pride brings this event to Helena. I hope it stays here for many years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any others? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. No. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries four to one. Thank you. Consider a resolution of intentions to approve the work plan and budget for the Tourism Business Improvement District and to levy an assessment on all property within the district for fiscal year 2023. Director Danielson, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Collins and Commission. I have before you a resolution of intention um, to approve the Tourism Business Improvement District Fiscal year 2023 work plan and budget and um, to levy an assessment on all property within the district to defray the costs of the business district. Within your packets was the um, fiscal 2022-2023 work plan and budget and I believe Andrea Opitz, the executive director of the Helena Tourism Business Improvement District is here to uh, talk about that plan if you have any questions or would like her to present that. Thank you, Director Danielson. Do you, do you have any questions before? Or, uh, please, um, Director Opitz. Opitz. Yes, Director Opitz. Yeah, I was just looking for that title, you know. I didn't want to mess that title up. <laughs> Thank you. You have the floor, Good Director. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Andrea Opitz, Executive Director of the TBID. 
Um, as Sheila mentioned, I, um, you do have that fiscal year work plan and budget in front of you, and I am happy to answer any and all questions. Thank you. Comments or questions from the commission? I guess, Mr. Mayor, just really briefly, um, for those members of the public who may not have gone through our agenda, can you maybe just provide a brief overview of what's included yeah, in Yeah, you bet. Plan? I'd be happy to touch on that. So um, the Tourism Business Improvement District, we are here to preserve and um, promote Helena as a unique destination, thereby creating vibrant growth and economic um, in the local economy here. So um, we do that through a variety of ways, um, through community partnerships this is a huge one on our, um, on our part of our organizational goals. Um, we market Helena and um, so this year, you know, we do that through a variety of ways. Um, one of the biggest ways is leisure recruitment. Um, so we're always, but it's much more than just leisure. We look at groups, um, meetings, events and tournaments, um, and um, also by helping trying to promote um, the experience once we have visitors here. So, you know, not only are we marketing to them, but we are working to help manage the destination um, once they arrive here. And so I would say one of the biggest pieces in this plan that is a little bit different from prior years is um, in this current climate we're in coming out of the pandemic, there is a lot more um, time and energy and focus placed on um, that, uh, um, the management side of things. We really need to work more closely than ever with our tourism stakeholders and make sure that we're supporting not only the local attractions, but our restaurants, retailers, and making sure that we're balancing that quality of life for residents. So um, it really is, uh, you know, a, um, a big, a, a lot of things that come into play with tourism because not only are we um, marketing a product, um, which is our city, we are marketing their experience once they come here and um, really want to make sure that we are doing that in an effective and efficient way. Um, this, the other big thing I think that stands out for us this year and that comes into play with those community partnerships is the branding of the destination. So um, we have talked a little bit about that um, and that's you know essentially going to provide that vision, strategic vision and roadmap for the future of Helena and what um, we want that to look like. And then, um, how we can effectively make sure that Helena remains not only vibrant, but um, a viable community in the coming years. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? I just have one more question. Oh. My only question was, um, can you talk a little bit about what is included in the $110,000 for opportunities and grants in your budget? Yes, absolutely. Um, so opportunities and grants, um, below that line item, you will see sponsored events. And so uh, we have a threshold that any um, ask in terms of sponsorship that's over $1,500 um, then is an opportunity. So that can be used, um, a big bulk of that money is for our Tourism Business Improvement District grant program. And that is a program that has, um, we have two cycles of that each year, and we invite uh, members, organizations, um, sports and tournaments, and um, pretty much anyone is, is welcome to come forward and to apply for a grant. Um, so those opportunity funds are, are spent to help support and promote those those events and make sure that they have the the dollars that they need in the um, in the early years of of trying to make successful events. And then I would say um, one other idea is if somebody 
Um, in the past, we may have an opportunity with the airport where they may come forward and look for community support to bring in um, additional uh, flights. Um, so, so items like that. It's, does thank that you. answer your it question? Does. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, so will you be coming forward here soon with an ARPA request again, as you did earlier on your branding project? Um, yes, yes. I, I'm not exactly sure how that process will work, but that, that ARPA request is, um, you know, it, it is still out there and we are still, still hopeful that we will see um, some ARPA funding to put towards the branding project. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I have one more question, but this could be for the city attorney or the city manager. Can you briefly describe to me how the Montana Code works in this event? I mean, is this a recent requirement that this come before this commission? Because every year, do these people bring, um, if you will, requests for funding or a work plan? And I'm, I'm just asking here if this is the code that controls all this or um, since we've created it quite a while ago, I'm just wondering if every year this comes back and back and back. Go ahead, Commissioner. Mayor, I mean, yes, uh, please. Commissioner Fever, yes, this comes back annually. Oh, that's by. That is by code, it must come back annually. I don't know if it's code or if it's the original creating documents, but is it code? It, it, it's part of that initial resolution. Yes, um, yeah. Mayor and uh, Commissioners, um, we have to have this come before the commission to actually levy the assessment every year. And so part of levying the assessment is bringing forward the work plan and the, and the budget um, before the commission to determine and to agree to levy the assessment on the, on the district owners. So uh, may I follow up on that one? Please, go so ahead. So every assessment must come back every year or just for the T-bid? Every assessment. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, I have no hands raised and no written public comment online. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Is that why? When? Is this, this, this is usually all those assessments are in one. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll be happy to make this motion. Um, I move we approve the resolution of intention to allow for public input. Oh, that's, I'm reading the wrong thing. Hmm. Why is that not right here in front of me? Thank you. Okay, moving on. Move to approve a resolution of intention to approve Tourism Business Improvement District Fiscal Year 2023 work plan and budget and to levy an assessment upon all property within the district for the fiscal year 2023 to defray the cost of said work plan and budget and to set a public hearing for June 6, 2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion from the commission? I'll entertain uh, Madam Clerk, a vote. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Thank you, Thank direct, you. Uh, Executive Director Opitz and Director Danielson. Thank you. Well, are you staying up for the next one, huh? Okay. <laughs> Consider a resolution approving the work plan and budget for the business improvement district and levying an assessment on all properties within the district for fiscal year 2023. Director Danielson. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. This is um, the actual resolution coming before you for the um, business improvement district work plan and budget and to levy an assessment on the um, businesses and private owners in the district. Um, there have been no changes um, from when we presented the resolution of intention, and I'm happy to answer any questions at this time if you have any. Thank you. Comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I do not have any questions, um, but one comment. Um, I know there's going to be a number of meetings regarding 
what the assessment formula is going to look like for the next, the FY24 budget. I'm wondering if, um, just request that maybe we can have maybe like a six month update um, just so that folks are prepped um, before we actually get to those budget discussions next year um, and, and how those conversations are going. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I have no public comment online. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I will move to approve a resolution approving the work plan and budget for the Business Improvement District and levying an assessment on all properties within the district for fiscal year 2023. Second. So it's been moved and seconded. Any final comments from the commission? That's right, just briefly. I don't think many people realize um, the number of, and I should have said this for the TBID too. I don't think people realize how many, uh, the public realizes how many people put time and effort into the boards that um, oversee these organizations. And so um, I just, I, I'm grateful for their willingness to work with the city um, and, and promote downtown um, in the BID. Um, and looking forward to, I've, I've learned a lot since joining the BID as the commission representative and so grateful for all their work. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Fever. Aye. Commissioner Reed. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Is there anyone from the public wishes to address the commission? Any final comments from the commission? This meeting is adjourned.